I looked toward my arm, and the hand of the thing that had grabbed me came into view. It's Thimi. Oh, that's not Thimi! Huh? She delusioned him! Yo, that's kind of real. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Hudlumunt here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, we got through Senna's ending. And uh, it was it was wild. There were babies involved, well, a baby involved. Um, we freaking got shot a bajillion times and somehow was still standing and then gave our life force to the baby because we found out, by the way, that the baby was the thing that needed to be destroyed so that we could get a cheat code to life. Uh, and Senna was like super pro life suddenly, and then and then Takumi was super pro choice, or or in this case just kind of pro abortion, <laughs> just pro like let's let's just get rid of the baby, no no real whatever uh, choice in the matter, just kind of just like I want my cheat code, so baby gotta go away type of deal, and uh, don't know what they were trying to say with all that. Still been trying to figure some of that out, but uh, now. After that ending, oh, and we he we heard someone talking at the end, but we don't know who it was. So whoever that was, uh, who knows? Um, but oh, I thought it was Momose actually. I think if I remember correctly, because it was a woman, and I don't know any other women in this game other than Momose. That's gonna make me cry, dude. If she's bad, and she's supposed to be with she's she uh, she was supposed to be with Bond, dude. Dude, that'll make me so sad. Anyway, now we move on to the second to last ending of the game. It feels like it's taken forever to get through all these endings. I don't know why, but uh, that ending that we are now starting on would be uh, Demi's ending. And so uh, this one we should be able uh, we should be able to get to it like pretty quick in chapter one. So, I guess we'll just skip through everything like usual and get right to her then. So, without further ado, let's just get into this, shall we? Oh yeah, wow, it's like almost the first delusion if you don't count the crap with Grimm in the beginning, so... Interesting, so right here, this is where we have to pick the positive delusion. And then we'll get a series of yes and no's after that. So, uh, we'll click that now. And, uh, I guess then we'll read from here. I felt bad about turning Miss Mikun down, since he seemed so excited about it. But I really did not want to go. But even though I was trying my hardest to refuse, he just wasn't listening. Maybe we'll even see the murderer. They say the criminal always returns to the scene of the crime, right? Heh. <laughs> Maybe she'd pick you as her next victim. To atone for your sins, you must die! You know, that kind of thing. As for your sins, though... Hmm... Being a shut-in! Uh. Alright, here we go. I felt like it should have been obvious to him how much I didn't want to go and see a puddle of blood and gore. It would have been way too much for me. It wouldn't be like a haunted house or a horror movie or something. People had actually died IRL, and the killer was still on the loose. So whatever the murderer was likely to be, I'd have liked to be anywhere but there. Still, I was curious about the murderer. What could have possibly been their motive? Were they just a psychopath that committed crimes for the heck of it? That was probably the most reasonable explanation. Well, whatever. It didn't really matter to me. I mean, I was a serial killer too. And even though I'd killed hundreds, people still treated me like a hero. That was in ESO, though. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Just goes to show how much better the 2D world is. Anyway, as I tried my hardest to turn down Miss Mikun's proposal, 
I imagined myself like a brawler straight out of some fighting game. A psycho killer? Huh. <laughs> if I ran into a guy like that, I'd turn him into mincemeat. In my delusions, I could kill or spare anyone I wanted. But the people who actually tried to live out those sorts of delusions were idiots. Didn't they know that real-life actions had real-life consequences? Even the new-gen killer would be caught eventually, and then they'd rot in a prison for years, decades even, just waiting to be sent to the gallows. If I could say one thing to them, it'd be... What a pity. You really should have just kept your delusions to yourself. Huh. <laughs> Alright, interesting. That's, uh... Man, I almost want to say ironic or or the pot calling the kettle black, but for the most part, I mean, he does kind of keep his delusions to himself, so I mean, you know. <laughs> Here we go, okay. I went out to buy myself some dinner. I took the road I always used to get to my local convenience store. It was only a three-minute walk from my base. I'd walked down this dirty alley more times than I could count. But for some reason, walking through it today, I couldn't help but feel as if I'd stepped into another world. The alley was the same as ever, but it felt like it was the first time I'd ever set foot in it. Familiar, yet new. Like the opposite of deja vu. I'd researched the phenomenon online before. The name of it was apparently Yamevu. What's more, the stench of rotting garbage was lingering in the air. The moisture in the atmosphere was so thick that, if I hadn't known any better, I'd have assumed that it had just been raining. The air was like syrup on my skin. Gross. I'd heard a sound. The faint sound of something dragging across the ground. I stopped in my tracks and listened closely. <laughs> so is he delusioning right now? Like, is he having a delusion, like, while in the classroom about freaking, uh, seeing the murderer or whatever? And then he's gonna snap too, and then Miss Me's gonna be like, dude, what happened? And he's gonna be like, oh no! They're gonna kill me, or whatever, so. I have a feeling that's what he... <laughs> I have a feeling that's what he's doing. It sounded like it was coming from up ahead. From somewhere down the alley and around the corner. Without any streetlights or lit-up windows, it was pitch black down there. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't see a thing. It was strange. This was modern-day Shibuya, a place that, along with Shinjuku, was known as the city that never sleeps. So how could there still be places that were this dark? It almost felt like the entrance to a haunted house. Actually, there was one very large distinction. This darkness wasn't man-made. It was real. I didn't want to go any farther. Nothing good would come of it. My brain set off every alarm bell it could, trying to prevent my body from taking another step. <laughs> but, for some inexplicable reason, my body stepped forward anyway, as if drawn to that repeating sound. My fear urged me to stop, that something horrible would happen if I kept going. My heart started racing. My forehead was slick with sweat. Huh? Up ahead. Suddenly, a noise that was beautiful, yet somehow discordant at the same time, reached my ears. A voice, garbled by static. Before I knew it, someone had grabbed my forearm. It was all too sudden. I panicked and tried to scream for help, but all that came out was a puff of air. Terrified, I tried to force my body to run away, but it wouldn't listen. 
I couldn't move an inch. I looked toward my arm, and the hand of the thing that had grabbed me came into view. It's Demi. Oh, that's not Demi. Oh. <laughs> what the frick? What is that? Dude, that's freaking, it's the freaking, uh, it's the Jelbana people, dude. Bro, it's the jellified people from Steins Gate. What the frick? Ew. Ew. No, how are you in this game? Get out of my freaking chaos head game. What the frick? It was dark green, with skin taut like a mummy's. Countless veins protruded from the surface. It didn't look alive. If you go any further... To be honest, it made sense that I couldn't move. Going all deer in the headlights was a natural reaction to what was happening. What was surprising to me, though, was that the voice in my ear was so soothing. The fear swelling inside me was starting to vanish. You'll be in danger. A serious yet gentle voice. I slowly looked over my shoulder. Uh, uh. Oh, it is Demi! Whoa, what the frick? Oh no, don't show us her face. Oh, I don't want to see that. The first thing I noticed was the Suime Academy emblem. The same emblem you could find sewn onto the chest of each and every Suime uniform. Then I noticed that the person was wearing a skirt, which meant she was a girl. But I didn't have the courage to look at the most important part, her face. She was standing way closer than I was expecting, so I couldn't bring myself to face her. I couldn't put my finger on why, but for some reason, something seemed off, so I turned my attention back toward her hand. Huh? Oh, it's normal again. The hand gripping my arm was delicate and feminine. Even though just a moment ago, I had seen it as green and grotesque. This girl. Who was she? What kind of expression was on her face? What kind of expression was she making at me? What was she doing here? I had no idea why, but... For some reason, I felt like I knew her. While staring at the pale hand wrapped around my arm, I tried to envision what she looked like. In my delusion, she... Oh, okay, here we go. Here's the yes and no's. Wait a minute here. Let's take a look. Okay, so... Has a ribbon in her hair. Okay, that's a yes. So we're probably going to be describing Demi then, yeah? Is wearing glasses. That's a no. Is wearing over-the-knee socks. That's a yes. I guess I never paid attention to that. I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> Is wearing a long skirt. Uh, no. Is making some sort of salute at me. And yes. <laughs> and that should be it. Hey, there we go. Snap! <laughs> Discovered Beamy's story. All right. All right. So here we go. I guess the it says it'll branch off at Chapter 8. So I guess we'll see how much we got to skip through uh, in the meanwhile. After this, though, I guess. In spite of all my questions, I couldn't manage to get a single word out. I simply hung my head in silence. At some point, the dragging sound had stopped. Turn back. And in its place, there was a smell coming from her body. Please... Takumi-kun. The stench of blood. Huh? Huh? That was awesome. <laughs> I was sitting behind a computer monitor. I chugged down a cola to contain my excitement. 
then leaned back in my chair. It had been one heck of a delusion. I especially liked that mystery girl. I might give her a name and flesh out her personality in future delusions. I let my imagination run wild like this all the time. Usually, I'd go on to cast an existing character as the girl, such as Seratan. So, I might as well do that here, too. Hmm. Actually, Sarah didn't quite fit the vibe of that mystery girl. Well, at any rate, it was a lot of fun mixing together 2D and 3D into my delusions. I was the god of the world inside my head. In there, everything bent to my will. I'll definitely make the next one more sexy. <laughs> I said that to myself as if I were at my base, but when I remembered I was in an internet cafe, I quickly covered my mouth. I quietly peeked outside. It didn't seem like anyone had heard me just now, so... Meh. <laughs> so, can I skip this now? Is this skippable? Okay, yeah, so that was the end of it. Okay, oh, well, okay, we just jumped right into a new part, so never mind. I guess we'll continue right here. Two hours prior. Uh huh? Oh, yeah, okay, so this is going to be uh, real Takami and probably Dimi talking, is my guess. The light of the sunset bathed a hospital room in a vibrant orange. All was silent, as if time itself had stopped. Only a single person was present, completely still, as if asleep, sat a boy in a wheelchair. It was around the time of day where one would find nurses rushing around the hospital, serving patients their dinners, and yet, no such signs of activity made their way to the room. Uh huh? A moment later, the silence was broken by the sound of a door opening. Yep, had a feeling. Oh yeah, there's her. Yeah, she was in normal clothes, remember? The, the, in uh, Nanami's route? And then Nanami ran into her and she's like, oh, you know, like acting all weird because Nanami knew her. Yo, dude, okay. A lone girl entered the room. The boy in the wheelchair lifted his head to acknowledge her, but did not speak. For a moment, the girl hesitated at the entrance. Looking around the room, she could sense a faint aura of loneliness emanating from it. The drab-looking room was minimal in size and reeked of disinfectant. This was where the two of them spent their days. An isolated location, eternally unknown to the rest of humanity. Not a single soul, be they a doctor, nurse, friend, or relative ever came to visit. The boy and the girl rarely exchanged words with one another. The boy had been hospitalized and for a whole year had been comatose. Only just a month ago had he awoken. Wait! That's when Takumi woke up, right? Because he's only been around for like a month, he said? Especially at this point in the game? Yo, so when he woke up, did, did Delusion Takumi wake up too? Oh, what the frick? Okay. I didn't remember that. Did they ever talk about him being in a coma? If they did, I didn't know what time. At least I don't remember what time. Oh, dang. Like, okay. The girl had been essentially using his room as a place to stay. However, as much as she did trust him, their relationship had nothing to do with any sort of romantic or sexual attraction. Her only goal was to repay her debt to the boy. Nothing more, nothing less. The boy was intentionally cold and distant, having even told her not to return once before. Yet all the same, she remained. This was, in part, because she had nowhere else to go. During his coma, she had been his lone caretaker. The couch in the room had become her bed, and even now... After he had awoken, she still used it as such. I brought you something to eat. 
She spoke with warmth and sincerity as she held out a bag of food she had brought from the convenience store. Her words scared away the static atmosphere and breathed new life into the dead world that surrounded them. The girl surrendered herself to such an illusion, but did not mention this to the boy as she laid several kinds of bread atop the empty bed. Hey, this has been on my mind for a while now, but is food like this enough to keep you healthy? I don't have much time left as it is. Regardless, I'm sorry for sending you out to buy these. It's all right, really. I got some food for myself, too, so don't worry about it. She forced herself to smile at the boy. Then, taking an egg sandwich for herself, she moved toward the window. Upon opening the window, the crisp autumn breeze permeated the quiet hospital room. Comfortably greeted by the wind, the girl narrowed her eyes and perched nimbly on the windowsill. The room was located considerably high up. Imaginably, falling would mean certain death. This, however, hardly mattered to the girl, who simply took a hearty bite out of her sandwich. The boy in the wheelchair paid her no heed. He did not even attempt to reach for the bread laid out on the bed. Listen, I need to ask you again. Are you really going to try and awaken him? I am. The chat the two of us had yesterday made that very clear to me. Nozomi has been keeping an eye on him, and Noah too is nearing completion. We must make haste. No matter what it takes? That's right. But... That makes us no better than Nozomi. Scaring him. Pushing him to the edge. He is all we have. But if he awakens, he'll die. I've been prepared for that from the very beginning. My death is suitable punishment for shoving all my responsibilities onto him. The girl kept her gaze focused on the setting sun, not daring to look over her shoulder at the boy. Her countenance laid her emotions bare. She looked as if she might burst into tears at any moment. Could erasing him be an option? If that were to happen, I would not hesitate to put myself through another year-long coma so that I could create another me perhaps even longer. But by the time I would succeed, Noah too will have long since been completed, an event that shall cast the world into despair. Despite his gentle tone, his words were laced with a touch of cynicism. Upon hearing them, the girl couldn't help but let out a sigh. I can't support the way you're going about this. We cannot allow Noah II to reach completion. I know we can't, but putting myself in his shoes, it's just so sad. And there's no way I can just stand around and watch while you kill yourself. I'm doing nothing of the sort. I'll take care of it. The boy finally moved a little taken aback by the girl's abrupt yet resolute words. What exactly do you mean by that? Finishing off the last of her sandwich, she stepped down from the windowsill, then turned to face him. Then, for some inexplicable reason, she snapped into a pose resembling that of a salute. I swear to protect him from Nozomi. That way... You won't have to die. But that negates the very reason he was created. And it doesn't solve anything. Noah too. I'll take care of Noah too as well. 
that just isn't something you can handle. I've already made up my mind. I won't let you do what you plan to do. I'm going to protect you. She gave him a frail yet tender smile. At the sight of this, the boy lost any and all words he had. You predicted there will be another incident today, right? It isn't just a prediction. It's an absolute fact. I have seen their delusion myself. If that's true, then I can't let him get involved. I'll be going now. She approached the door. Even if you interfere, I will still force him to awaken as planned. As she opened the door, hearing the boy's words directed at her back, she paused for one final time. No signs of life came from the hallway. Not a single human being was in sight, and not a single sound reached the room. Hey, just what are we exactly? The two of us have been here for over a year, all while nobody even knows we exist. Being here, I can't help but feel like my existence is nothing more than an illusion or something. <laughs> I think this hospital's gloominess is getting to my head. Themi, you shouldn't get involved. Despite the boy's pleading, the girl did not look back. Make sure to eat the bread I got you, okay? After murmuring those last few words, the girl left the hospital room. Interesting. Okay, so we kind of already knew some of that, right? That she's protecting him and, and all that stuff, like like delusion Takami and whatever. And it seems like it's just because, you know, she considers his existence important, just like their existence. But real Takami's just like, he's fake anyway, so what's it matter? But also, I'm okay to die because, you know, creating him for this particular, uh, you know, mission is kind of screwed up of me, so I get what I deserve type of mentality, but he's very more realistic, right? He's very much uh, a realist, whereas Dimi seems to be more of a, uh, uh, op not optimist, uh, a, a uh, I forget what the other word is that I can't think of, but uh, a dreamer is all I can think of. <laughs> so, huh, okay. Yeah, it didn't really give us, like, technically new information, just that we now know that she told him that that's what she was going to do, that she was going to stop Noah to, um, so that, you know, delusion Takami doesn't have to perish, so, uh, or awaken or anything like that and freak out, so that kind of makes sense then of all the stuff where she's like, I was trying to protect you and not have you wake up and just keep going back to what you were doing and all that crap, right? So, okay, all right, well, moving on from here then. Oh, okay, it stopped me right here, right at the crucifixion scene. Uh, okay. So, he just saw her. Uh, I guess we'll see what this is. She, too, had heard that sound. Before, there had been a strange whirring sound. Like something tearing its way through the air. Soon after she heard it, she discovered its origin. A rucksack worn by a nearby suspicious-looking person. When she attempted to pursue them... However, they escaped. That was when she heard another sound echoing in the distance. The shrill sound of stakes being nailed into a wall. And, though faint, the whirring sound from before could still be heard as well. The two sounds resonated in grating harmony, creating the illusion that her ears may start bleeding at any moment. Wait, is this real, Demi? Hearing this as well? Are they about ready to, like, see each other? Her and... Oh, because she talks to Takami in this... In the bloody state, the first time we meet her, like, nothing happened, right? So I bet he's going to see the real her, but see the delusion version of her and then freak out and run away, right? Is that what's going to happen? Okay. Am I... Too late? Lightly biting her lip, 
she sprinted toward the source of the sound. And there, her eyes landed upon. Oh no! Yeah, I think she's about ready to become his delusion. Uh-oh. A corpse affixed to a wall by several cross-shaped stakes. Startled, she surveyed her surroundings. Though she loathed to admit it, the status of the victim did not matter to her in the slightest. If granted the opportunity, she would naturally have preferred to save him. But it was much too late. And now, there were more important matters at hand. She couldn't let Nishijo Takami see this place. She couldn't let him be consumed by fear. Ah, uh, yeah, so he's about ready to run into her. So they must have just... Because I saw that he saw the crucifixion, so they must have jumped slightly back in time to when she arrives and then he's going to see her, so... Where could he be? With that on her mind, she returned her gaze to the corpse. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> she was at a loss for words. She had only looked away for a second, and yet, in that short time, countless stakes had gruesomely mutilated the corpse. Just a moment ago, there had only been a few stakes on the wall just enough to suspend the corpse in midair. There hadn't even been any external injuries, let alone blood. But now, a grisly spectacle lay before her eyes. The sight of it left her reeling in horror, frantically fighting to endure her nausea. Her vision distorted as uncertainty seized her heart. Is a delusion eroding reality? In that moment, the girl came to notice that the changes did not end there. Oh, oh no! Oh no! Oh yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a problem. <laughs> yeah, so she's gonna be like, uh oh, hey, how, you, how are we doing? And then he's gonna freak. Her clothes were different. She was wearing a uniform unfamiliar to her. From a school she didn't recognize. Oh, right, yeah. She wasn't wearing that a second ago. What the frick? Uh, so... Is Takami building this delusion, or is Nozomi building it on her? What the frick? In addition, her body was stained with crimson. And in her hand was a stake. No. Is this... A delusion synchro? Oh, right, yeah, she mentions that in the beginning, doesn't she? Something about that. Someone's delusion had edited the scene around her. The gruesome corpse, her clothes, the rich scarlet blood. Was any of it real? No. It couldn't possibly be real. There was no stench of blood. She couldn't feel the icy chill of the metal stake in her hand. She put her hand to her bloody cheek, and it came away dry. She carefully reached for one of the stakes planted in the body, but when she tried to grab it, her hand grasped nothing but air. So she's able to see past illusions then. That's kind of interesting. I feel like, who, who else could do that? Was, was Senna someone who could do that? Like, see past it in order to, like, notice that it's not there? I think Takami might have done that at least once or twice, too. Can't remember. Everything was a delusion. A far, far too vivid delusion. But at any moment, the delusion could become reality. It had already taken form. Once real booted, it would merge with reality. What was she to do? The girl was overtaken by doubt. A delusional space like this, oozing negativity, was well beyond anything she was used to dealing with. Such a powerful deluder may have already taken Nishijo Takami's life. She might suddenly find Takami pinned to the wall in this man's place. At this point, it would not even surprise her. Driven by anxiety, she let out a soft cry, 
and right at that moment... The picture... Shogun sent! Oh no! The terrified scream of a boy resounding from behind her. Oh no, no! <sighs> At first, she seemed shocked. But her expression quickly changed to a somber smile. And then... Thank... Goodness... She softly whispered those words. Thank goodness? Thank goodness... For what? And why was she smiling at me? I didn't understand. The questions kept piling up, to the point where it sent a chill down my spine. Now panicking, I tried to avert my eyes. I think we've seen all this, haven't we? Or is it not going to let me skip? Oh yeah, nope, we've seen all this, yep, okay. So it was just to see how she was interjected into there. We'll probably also see what... Oh, yep, okay, it stopped here again. I was going to say, we're probably going to see two when she comes to his container house and he thinks that she's there to kill him. We're probably going to see the lead up to that as well. And I think even probably when she leaves, actually, because I, I think she says she's going to go to the... Was it the convenience store to get something? Like drinks for them or something? I can't remember. Okay, all right. But now we're here in the hospital again, so... Let's see what this is. The vast majority of the nurses at Yoyogi's General Hospital were out making their rounds. Only one could still be found sitting alone at the nurse's station. She stared at a laptop with a deadpan expression on her face. Despite not being on break, she was in the middle of a phone call. It did not seem to matter to her in the slightest that she was violating her work's policy on cell phone usage. It's got to be uh, Hazuki-san, right? Um, yeah, it seems to be. Reflected in her blank eyes was a certain chat log, shining brightly on the computer screen before her. Hmm. Oh, here he is. Nishijo Takami. You sure it's him? Most likely. Speaking on the other end of the call was a man. It was clear from how they spoke to one another that the conversation had nothing to do with work. He's not using his real name, though. Just his online handle. But he did know about the formula. I'll copy everything and send it over. Hmm. With a mechanical flick of her wrist... The nurse moved the mouse with the intention of copying the log. However, she suddenly stopped. Her brow furrowed. What on earth? Something wrong? The nurse ignored the man's question, narrowing her eyes as she brought her face closer to the screen. Um... What's with the German... Uh, I don't notice what she's looking at. Okay. The screen still displayed the chat logs. However, something seemed different from a few seconds prior. Something had changed. An impossibility, considering they were logs, not real-time conversations. Oh, right, the time changed, right? That's been a thing since, since the beginning, right? Because, yeah, it said Monday, but now it's Sunday or something like that, right? I remember that, but I never knew what the significance of that was. And yet, even though everything had felt perfectly normal a moment ago, something felt incredibly out of place now. The timestamps, they changed. What do you mean? The man understood how absurd her claim was, and the voice on the other end of the call became much lower. It was perfectly normal just a second ago. What on earth is going on? Chill out. We're dealing with a gigalomaniac. And a monster one at that. So they were tampered with then? Looks like they don't want us knowing who they really are. 
This whole timestamp deal makes it look like he's putting on a one-man show. Looking at it that way, maybe that's the goal. They turned reality into a delusion. Keep an eye out, Shino. Seems like they're watching your every move. Son of a... Suddenly, a sense of uneasiness crept up the back of Shino's neck. <gasps> oh, he's watching her! Oh, shoot! Yo, the real Takami's watching her, dude. Oh my gosh, that's been the eyes this whole time. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, I technically we knew that, but I'm just saying it's like, he's literally the dude watch. Oh, man. Yo. So then we've been watching ourselves. And, and apparently everybody else too. Oh, dang. Okay. Covering her nape with her hand, she turned to face the source of the gaze. But there was nobody there. Not a single soul could be found within the nurse's station. May the divine light save us. Shino murmured those words of prayer to herself, hoping they would sweep the fear away. Interesting. Okay. Huh. Okay, so can I skip this then? Yeah, I can. Okay, so... So he's been watching everybody, man. This is like his game, bro. He's playing this game. They're all just pawns in his own game, dude. <laughs> oh, okay, it stopped us here. So this was shortly after we gave uh, Nanami the bangle. So I guess we'll see what this is then. Sakihara Dimi remained expressionless as she moved forward. She was walking down one of Suemei Academy's many hallways this one lined with classrooms for second-year students. She was not accustomed to wearing a uniform, as this was her first time setting foot in this place. She paid no mind to all the other students in her vicinity. However, her apparent composure was a mere facade, one intended to desperately conceal a boiling pot of unease within her. Her somewhat awkward march through the halls betrayed this, but, as she proceeded toward her destination, she kept her head held high all the same. Yo, does she have anxiety a little bit too, huh? Interesting. Soon enough, she reached room 2C. This is the place? She already knew the answer. It was Nishijo Takami's class. She placed her hand on the closed door. Only then did she realize that her fingers were trembling. On a normal day, I would have wanted to come here. Such a desire crossed her mind for a moment, but she stopped her delusions from progressing any further. After taking a small breath, she vigorously slid the door open. Interesting. Good morning, everyone. Her stoic expression faded as if it had never existed to begin with. The classroom before her was remarkably cheerful, overflowing with energy. She lifted her right hand to her forehead, snapping into the pose of a salute. I wonder if they're finally going to tell us what the salute is during this route. I need to know. Dimi's greeting resounded throughout the classroom, and the classroom fell as silent as death itself. Class had not started yet, so the room was about half full. But everyone that was there was looking her way, visibly puzzled. And for good reason. Nobody in this class, no, nobody in this school knew who she was. And for that very reason, Dimi had to first make sure to draw everyone's attention. So, here's my thing, right? So, are all these other students real, like, gigalomaniac students? And they just don't know it, and they're just not important to the story? Or they're, like, weaker gigalomaniacs or something? Or are they all delusions to make the actual gigalomaniacs, like Ayase and maybe Miss Mikun, unless he's a, a delusion too, like I was thinking he probably was, and Takami, and Senna, and all the rest of them, like... Is it just to make them think that the school is a real school, but they're all actually, like, fake people? But, like, if they were, at least according... Well, I mean... I, well, I was gonna say... Well, because, okay. It depends if they're real people or not, right? Because, technically, 
real Takami create a delusion Takami and it darn near killed him, right? But like, so, so I'm thinking if they, if they like created all these real people, if they are real people, that like, unless the machine did it, I guess, if Noah 2 did it, then I guess maybe it's capable of doing that without killing itself. But um, otherwise they got to be like soulless shells that just mimic people, right? I mean, just because they're delusions. So, right? Unless there's mutual recognition, which turns them into a real person or whatever. I don't know. But that's that makes me curious. Are they real or are they you know, like actual gigalomaniacs or are they just stand-ins, if you will? I don't know. Oh! She drew her D-sword. And yet, not a soul reacted. The sword, with blades arranged like inflexible feathers, was still a delusion. It was visible to no one. For her purposes, however, that was enough. Go forth, my delusion. She fired her thoughts at the eyes of those gazing at her. Then, as if it had somehow been planned beforehand, everyone blinked in unison. Oh, she just gave them all delusion so they'd know her, right? And then, all at once, the room's frozen atmosphere thawed. Themi looked around the room once more, and then a smile formed on her face. Good morning. Morning, Sakihara. Sup? Why so loud? It's way too early, Demi. You mind being a bit quieter when you come in next time? One after another, each student spoke to her like they had always known her. Yeah, alright. Even though, until mere seconds ago, they had never seen her before. But it was different now. Dimi had planted delusions into them. Delusions that soon attained mutual recognition. Recognition that Sakihara Dimi is a student at Suime Academy and is a member of Class 2C. Two days prior, she had tested this trick on Nishijo Takami, Taku, but it had proven to not be very effective. As a result, she had been worrying over how exactly it would unfold when she tried it here. So was that in the container house that she did that? I'm trying to think. Oh, right, right, because... Because she tried to say, yeah, we've always been friends, right? We've been friends for a long time, right? Oh, so she was trying to trick us and, and give us a delusion. And so he was like, what? No, we haven't. And she was like, ah, oh, crap, it doesn't work. So she was using us as a guinea pig to, to see if this would work so that she could try and create an atmosphere that makes Takami or Taku think that we've always known her, right? Is that what it is? Oh, dang but it seemed her anxiety had been unfounded. After seeing the smiles of her chattering classmates, she heaved a sigh of relief. She recalled her D-sword, then approached an empty seat from a vacant row in the back of the room. This desk was another delusion she had created. Oh, okay. So I wonder if Taku wasn't uh, affected because... He's such a strong gigalomaniac that he can just, like, see through or cancel out delusions. Like, he wasn't willing to create mutual recognition because he's so paranoid that he was like, no, you're a demon. There's no way that's real. And so because he, because he was doing that, she couldn't trick him because he wasn't willing to believe it, right? So, okay, that's interesting. She placed her bag down, but rather than sitting, she turned to face the boy approaching her. Oh, what the frick? Okay. Oh, oh yeah, because they're supposed to be friends. Okay. Yo, Dimi. Hey, Miss Me Daisuke. Miss Me Daisuke. Miss Me Daisuke. Dimi spoke his name three times to ensure her certainty. Why'd you say my name three times? And my whole name at that. <laughs> I just felt like it. Uh, Daichin. <gasps> she delusioned him! 
he's her delusion, not ours. What the frick? She created this environment for Taku. Oh no, what the frick? I knew he was a delusion. I knew it all along. I just didn't know she was the one that made him. Oh my gosh. I was freaking right. I want you to say it in the comments. I want you to tell me how right I was. I want you to like the video. Dude. Oh my gosh, this is like somewhat, and that's not quite akin because the, the the thing from Steins Gate Zero, the, the freaking, the freaking like, like calling out that I freaking pulled off in that one was freaking legendary. This one's like a few steps down from that, but it's still freaking, I called that, okay? I freaking saw it before they ever even gave an inkling that he was a delusion, like for real, okay? So I deserve some props for that, all right? I want to see it in the comments. I want to see it. <laughs> Dude, oh my gosh, she just made a fake person. Why didn't she just use one of the other people in there? Why did she make a whole, like, new person? Or is he? Maybe he's not. No, because she had to give him his name, right? That's what, that's what lets us know he's a delusion, right? So he's not just a, a real... Unless she saw his mind. Oh, she might have, she might have read his mind. Because it said for certain, let me let me read a little further. I could be totally horribly wrong and just made a, a fool of myself. Let's see. <laughs> Miss Me was Taku's friend. In addition to being quite handsome, he clearly put care into the way he dressed. Oh. <laughs> so he is real? He's a real person? He's actually a, a person in the school? Are you serious? There's no way she just made... No, there's no way. No, th he has to be a delusion that someone created. Okay, so there's still hope that, that Taku created him for himself, right? There's still hope for that. Right, maybe. But like, so, so, so Dimi just tried to make sure that she would be close with, 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 uh, with Miss Mikun so that way. That, that way she could get close to Taku, is that it? Dude, oh, man, I thought I was onto something, but the, the dream still lives, okay? It still could be out there. It could be. You don't know. We might find out he's completely a delusion that Takumi made so that, you know, he could hopefully get more uh, friggin' uh, confidence in himself and all that, right? It's possible. A delusion creating another delusion. It's possible. I'm not giving up on that. <laughs> Dimi did not know how his friendship with Taku had come to be. Yeah, see, see, she doesn't even know, so I bet he's, I bet he's a delusion, dude. I bet. Perhaps Takumi was responsible, fabricating this friendship through delusions. Yeah, exactly, but, but actually, Miss Mikun's the delusion, right? Just say it, just say the word, just say it. Or perhaps Miss Me and Taku truly had formed a genuine friendship on their own with no outward interference. The cause mattered not. All that mattered was that he and Taku were friends. Dimi's delusion had already implanted fresh memories within him. Where's Taku? He's not here yet. Then again, is today one of the days he's supposed to be? Pretty sure, yeah. Leave it to his babysitter to be on top of things. I don't think I could ever wrap my head around that guy's schedule. <laughs> Dimi wore a strained smile. It was a smile formed from feelings of guilt. Everyone's memories had been altered with delusions. This would remain Dimi's secret, with nobody else suspecting a thing. Those around her would act friendly with her. However, nothing could change the fact that these relationships had been crafted from falsehoods. She had thought that she had become completely accustomed to loneliness by now. But, by placing herself in this classroom, she was subjecting herself to desolation stronger than ever before. Yo, that's kind of real. <laughs> Holy crap. Dang. Hmm. Feel that feeling. 